Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Zero Turn. Today we're here in the sunshine state of Florida. And as you can see, it's not so sunny. So we're gonna pull an audible with Bob and Tiffany from Elite Yard Services. We're gonna to talk to them about how they've grown their business. We actually started push mowing acres in Georgia. I'll be throwing up, dude, it was crazy. How they've grown a community around their lawn care and maintenance services. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and every time I would change duty stations, within me of the business over there. And exactly how they got their customers to pay on the first of the month every single time, no more waiting to get paid. That's so interesting. <laughs> this is systems that are already in place for other businesses and you guys yeah. bringing that to lawn care and landscaping yeah. is incredible. Let's see what they've done. We got Tiffany and Bob here, and they are the owners and operators of Elite Lawn Care Services. If you guys want to tell us a little bit about your business, how you guys got started. Absolutely. So um, I was in the military at the time. Um, I'm now a U.S. Army veteran. And we started 2017, and we actually discovered that there was an issue with spouses finding jobs. And we saw that we can actually get into it. And Bob himself was actually working for a company at the time. Yeah. So he came up with yeah. the idea and we just took off running. I mean, I would always go inside the commissary and it'd be like, need landscapers, need this. And then even in the communities, they were always, you know, looking for landscapes. So I thought, you know what, let's put this together and see how it works out. And there was, you know, multiple spouses on post office complaining about jobs. So yep. when we put it together, it, it grew pretty fast. So you guys were on base, I assume? Yes. And you guys weren't here in Florida. Where yeah. were you guys starting? We started in um, Kansas. Fort Raleigh, Kansas. Yeah, Fort Raleigh, Kansas. <laughs> wow. So did you originally get the like other spouses involved so, that were there, or was it just you pioneering? The first 90 days, it was just me. Yeah. And then after that, you know, yeah, we, we had a lot of the weekend warriors come in, you know, because they got to do the PT and the drill during the week. But yeah. on the weekends, I mean, from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you know, we were getting calls, hey, you got any work? You got this, you got that? So they will meet us at the commissary, we'll pick them up, and we'll be out for maybe six to eight yep. hours and you drop them back. So, yeah. So I was yeah, in charge man. of the recruiting part because I had the relationship with the soldiers. So, you know, if I heard soldiers, like, oh, I need a part time job, like, hey, you can come work for us. <laughs> so, when you guys were doing that, was it initially just maintenance to get started? Yes. Just mowing, correct. God, yeah. Just mowing. For the first 90 days. For the first yeah. 90 days. After that, you know, we got into some side, little, little side jobs around people's sheds or yeah, just little patches here and there. And then I said, hey, you know, let's do a bigger job. So we started doing yep. bigger um, side jobs. And we actually started push mowing acres in Georgia. What was the, like, what was the breakdown on mowing an acre by hand like that, basically? So this right here <laughs> is our first original mower that we bought from the dealer. Yeah, that's the first one. All right. 400 bucks. We didn't even know a self-propelled mower existed. It wasn't until Sanford Lawn Care messaged us and said, hey, why don't you guys look into a self-propelled mower? But we would push it. We did eight to 10 lawns a day, sometimes two acres. And I'll be throwing up, dude. It was crazy. So we had to take <laughs> turns. Take yeah. yeah. Either the front, it, either the back. So yeah. I remember my heart just beating in like 100 degree weather. I was like, yo, forget this, man. <laughs> yeah, we don't miss it. We don't miss it at all. <laughs> Could you guys share a time with us when you either like lost your shirt on a job, like estimate gone wrong, or customer freak out? Do you guys wanna go over a little bit? I know you're saying, so in the winter, you guys sell off all your stuff, yeah. and then summer you buy again. What's that sort of process for you? What are you guys taking in consideration when like upgrading your stuff? So we try to stay with at least one or two new equipment. It's just easier for us to do it that way. And plus, we're, you know, we have a, a strong relationship with a lot of landscaping companies in the area, so yeah. we tend to cut them good deals. We're always looking at the new stuff that come out, but we've really been interested in switching to the electric trimmers and the electric blowers. That's where a lot of the, the income went to when we sold a lot of things because man pulling the string in a hundred degree yeah. weather and you're like eh, 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 <laughs> and the neighbor the client's looking at you like this guy doesn't know what he's doing yeah so you know it's kind of embarrassing so we decided to say you know we're gonna try some things new this year and um, you know get like a set of self propelled blowers and maybe invest in some um, electric equipment as well so yeah yeah so you guys said your customer base is already looking for like push mowers, yeah. um, maybe more electric. 
Yeah. Uh, what it was kind of like your target demographic, if you had to pick like your perfect customer, what do they look like? Um, no fence <laughs> on their property. <laughs> a customer that is also fertilizing their lawn. And one that is interested in keeping their property maintained and upselling. So and living in a, a high yeah. HOA. Yeah. A high HOA subdivision because we know for a fact that they're they're gonna use us. Nothing against those that are not in a strict HOA, but we just find it that it's easier to keep busy and to keep those lawns looking nice when you're getting that hassle from the HOA. Hey, you must right. maintain this. You must do this. So you know that would be pretty much our ideal client. No fence. Yep. No fence. <laughs> if you have a fence, don't call us. <laughs> How do you guys go about finding these customers, especially with being like moving so many times? Obviously, yeah. you don't have your first customer still. I'm sure. At this point, you guys must have some sort of process for getting it all going. Before, we, so how it would work was before she got stationed, like say for instance, we're in Kansas and she's getting ready to get stationed in right. Georgia. I would actually just go down in Georgia for like two days and then come back and then I'll go down for 30 days and I'll promote. So I'll we would already flyers, get our flyers done you know, ahead of time. I'll ask to cut a, a client's property for free just yeah. to get the footage, you know, just to say, hey, we're in the area. And then we would boost those, those views, photos and videos ads, in those yeah. areas. Yeah. So by the time she actually gets stationed there, we already have the clientele. And wow. we'll join yeah. all the Facebook groups. And it's worked you know, every helps. time. <laughs> so yeah, just kind of trying to get your foothold before yeah. you're right. even there. Yeah. So a lot right. of like preemptive work. A lot of clients will know, they know the grass type. Hey, that, that's, not, that, Florida. that's, not, that's Florida. not Florida. <laughs> we don't have that grass here. So we have to make sure we're gonna come down, we're gonna yep. knock on doors, you know, get acquainted with the community, you know, maybe put out some free services or whatnot. Therefore, we have that on file that, hey, right. we've done this, we do this. it's easier for us so we know exactly how many clients, how much revenue is coming in by the first. Well, you guys do a lot of maintenance work, yes. but you're also doing landscaping. Yes. And I heard you guys service all of Florida. So what's that sort of like? What's yes. kind of the mentality behind expanding the service area to be like that? So when it comes to lawn care, we mainly do a certain mile radius. Yeah. But landscaping, for the right price, we'll fly anywhere in Florida. And that's only because right now we're still trying to figure out where we, you know, want to actually reside. You know, we don't, we're like I said, we're risen from South Florida, so we'll go down to South Florida. We're in Sarasota, Fort Pierce, Tallahassee, yeah. uh, Pensacola, and we've done a lot in those areas for the right price. We can get it done. If we can't really get out there to get certain measurements done, we'll try to map quest it. Right. You know, but we don't we'll get Google the opportunity to, to to close every estimate but yeah. for the most part we've done pretty good this year yeah. when you're trying to do like those larger landscaping jobs especially if you're flying out what's your process are you renting equipment once you get there so we have relationships with other landscapers throughout florida yeah. because we also own other businesses uh, financial business where we do a lot of landscapers uh yeah, taxes bookkeeping, bookkeeping yeah. payroll so we already have you know the the friendship in certain areas so a lot of times if we can't rent certain things we they'll let us borrow the borrow. equipment and, we're not. <laughs> and then hopefully when these when these new clients call, they're closer to the military basis. So we can call a friend in Pensacola who's stationed at a Navy base and say, hey, what yeah. are you doing this weekend? You know, so. Community really, really helps. Um, we tried not to have the whole competition. We try to build relationship. And yeah. even when we was coming from Georgia to Florida, they would message us on Instagram and we'll be, you know, sending them messages, encouraging them. And, you know, basically you said Sanford and different other lawn care and landscaping companies would give us tips as well. There was hey, actually a price guy this much and in, <laughs> in the mall. We were coming out of the mall. Oh, and yeah. Some <laughs> random guy pulls up. He's like, oh, crap, you guys finally made it. I'm like, I'm like, huh? like yeah, I follow you on Instagram, oh, man. Yeah. Can I get a picture? Oh, I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. Great. It's great when you have a community and you can actually have instances where if you're in an area and, you know, unfortunately you may not be able to rent an equipment, but you know someone who has a post and they're not working that day, it's beneficial, you know, so yeah. it's, wow. it's great. Yeah, kind of tearing down those walls instead of like, as you see the truck driving towards you, you're not yeah. like yeah. ducking your head, nah, trying to avoid them, yeah. yeah. wave and smile. Nah. Right, right. We actually get upset if you don't, hey, like, you don't see me? Like, he must up, be man? new. He must be new. Yeah, yeah, he must be the new guy, man. So speaking of the truck, you guys have yours yeah. wrapped and decaled. Yeah. What do you think that did for your business? Do you think that it was worth the initial investment? Do you guys think that maybe it was a little overblown? Definitely worth it. Yes. I mean, we made we made that back. It was eighteen eighteen hundred. Taxes and everything came up to a little over two grand. We made it back within nine days. Yeah. Within nine days, yeah. you know. And there's been times where we'll park this at Lowe's or Walmart. 
and we just get the calls. Hey, we've seen your truck. We want to know, can we, do you do mm -hmm. this? Do you do that? So that's cut down a lot of our marketing since we've gotten that. Yeah. You know? So I would say if you got the funds to do it, maybe don't do a May full not wrap. May not be a full wrap like ours, but. but the, you know, get something flashy so it can be seen because that's just 24 hour advertisement right there. And, yeah. it, and it also shows your commitment because once it's on there, you can't take it off. Yeah. <laughs> you can, but you gotta pay to take it off, so yeah. yeah. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. If you're looking for more Mike Andy's content, from Lawn Care Web Design, P4P Software.com, or pick up the new book. Check out MikeAndies.com. We got it all in one place, bundled up for you. We'll see you there. I'm sure you guys have come across yeah. some yeah. tough clients out there. What is your guys' strategies to like go as far as like meet what they're asking for, or are you guys pretty quick just to drop them like they're not going to be your ideal client? Communication is key. Normally, within the first, I'll say within the first six hours, you'll know if a client's going to be a problem, especially if they've said, "Well, I've been through so many landscapers." Yeah. That's a red flag. That's a red flag. You know, <laughs> right now in this field, it's not always a landscaper. Yeah. You know, it's normally 50-50. Maybe he didn't show up one time or maybe you're just being picky or whatnot. Normally communication. I have a strong communication skill when it comes to our clients. So I try to make sure I talk to them in advance, let them know what we're going to do. And we record all of our, our conversations. So when they say, well, no, you did not say this. Then we play the recording over and say, ma'am, sir, we did say this. So are you sure you would like, you know, to do this and that, or would you like us to cancel the services? Once we show them that, hey, we had this conversation before, they normally just back off. It's normally yeah. those who are just, you're saying one thing, they're saying one thing, and you're going around a circle and you can't really pinpoint where, you know, where you're going. And then normally that's when it becomes a problem. But you got to have that to the point where, you know, you're recording everything and everything you say is you're repeating it. So don't get it to the point where they're running your business. You need to make sure you're meeting word for word and you're sticking by what you say you're gonna what you say at the beginning of the conversation when you do the estimates. Yeah, yeah and we always communicate with our clients when our, when the lawn's been serviced, your lawn's been serviced, therefore we have a record, they have a record. Mm -hmm. And you know, on top of that, when it comes to difficult clients, there's times where we had to drop them and say, Hey, you're not a good fit or you know, we find some other way to let them down nicely. But uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been quite a few. We text our clients, your lawn's been serviced. Okay. So when they're like, oh, my lawn wasn't serviced last week. I'm like, Tiffany, how many services has this client had this month? <laughs> One, two, three, four, we'll screenshot it. Yeah. A lot of companies are not doing that. They're just freelancing and they're trying to remember. We track every little thing that yeah, we you do. Have to. Yeah. But a side job, you're gonna need a new back. Okay, especially <laughs> if you're doing two acres of plus like we did in Georgia, yeah, it's not yeah, fun, yeah. yeah. Are you guys just tracking all that manually? Do you Phone and a board. If you go in our, we have yeah. like a bunch of boards area. on the, the walls. Board. I'm old school, yeah, she's yeah. more into the whole yeah. keeping it logged in the computers, yeah. but I need to see it. So I'm like, okay, check mark, check mark, do this. Mm -hmm. And everything is laid out. So when I wake up in the morning, I know who needs to be serviced, who's been serviced, yeah. who hasn't paid. Okay, that one's not on the list for today. It's easier for me. Yeah, know? he likes so. the manual. I like to stick to, of course, with the invoicing and payments. That's all electronic. We don't do it. We're not accepting no cash. We stopped doing cash. I think in the middle of the pandemic, we stopped yeah. receiving yeah. cash. Uh, we use Yardbook for all the invoicing. So we have, that's our system that we use to collect all of our clientele address. So they change address, commercial, multiple addresses. So it helps keep everything organized in that way. And invoicing and payments. Therefore, I know who's paid, who hasn't. Um, and then, of course, the board just helps the visual part of knowing for him, you know, who's been mowed, who's paid, and that's that. And everyone pays up front, so we find it easy to do that so that we're not going in debt and then they don't owe us. Because a lot of companies, they'll just mow first and then wait to get paid and they're not getting paid and then they went two or three months without the client paying, mm -hmm. but they're still showing up. Now you're three months behind. Yeah. If you don't pay by the first, that's it. Yeah, we yeah, automatically yeah. cancel the services. And oh, then wow. you'll you'll pick up the following month because we don't bring any clients in the middle of the, the in month. The month. It's really? beginning. Yeah. So invoices go out towards the end of February. Mm -hmm. You must pay within the twenty eighth or the second of the following month. After the second, we cancel that invoice. So even if you try to pay it, you because that's gonna it. disrupt our 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 route. Our schedule. You know, we mowed everybody already for this week. Now you're paying at the end of the week when we've already done everyone at the beginning of the week. Now I have to go back to that location. Nah, we, we don't do it like that, yeah. yeah. Or even if so. we're taking on a new clientele and they're coming on towards the end of the month, 
And if they really need service, we'll give them a complimentary service and then, you know, come yeah. the first, mm -hmm. then they'll come in on. But yeah, we try to, we try to maintain and keep all our clientele. Some have their cards on file and then some, you just send them the invoice within at least a week's notice so they know it's gotcha. coming up. Gotcha. That's so interesting. That's, that's probably the first time I've ever heard of having them all pay mm -hmm. on the month. And it doesn't sound crazy. Like that's how we do rent. That's how we do mortgage. Exactly. How you do car payments. Exactly. Like this is systems exactly. that are already in place for other businesses. And you guys yeah. bringing that to lawn care and landscaping yeah. is incredible. It's like a subscription. Yeah. You, Everyone you pays on the first. <laughs> the money is there. Yeah. You have, you know, you have nothing to it's worry about. It's easier for us. It's easier on them. You've already paid for the money. You don't have to worry about, you know, if we're coming or not. We've already established that relationship. Shit. And on top of that, you don't have to worry about, you know, if your car's on file, we won't charge it until the first. And it's easy for us so we know exactly how many clients, how much revenue is coming in by the first. Yeah. So it's, it's easier for us. Yeah, and I'm sure like, especially if you guys are in that like sort of flexible season, like winter right now, and you need to like, like wow, we got a lot coming up. You need to rent equipment. You have the funds to rent the equipment to get right. the job done. You guys mentioned card on file. Mm -hmm. Do you guys require card on file? Or it's with that right. system, no, it's, an, it's not as important? It's optional. So on the invoice that it sends, I think at the bottom, it gives them an option mm -hmm. <laughs> to, yeah. to put their card on file. So there's clients that, I wouldn't even tell them, they just add it that their cards on file. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess they won't have their card. Most of the clients that put their card on files yeah. are military, truckers, yeah. or those that are a little up there in age and they just don't want nothing to do with landscape. They just want you to show up and leave them alone. Yeah. That's it, yeah. 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 Obviously, like changing seasons, right? So, right now, are you guys done to, down to bi weekly bi down here? Yeah. Does that just increase then to weekly? come springtime? So Where the prices you know, remain the same. Set price. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. Gosh. Gotcha. Yeah, but we yeah. still drive by your property every week. St. Augustine, Zoja, they're bi-weekly. Bermuda, you're once a month. I mean, you're, if you got Bermuda, it's not growing. That goes completely dormant. Wow. All right, but yeah, although you're on the bi-weekly or the monthly schedule, we still drive by your property every week because you just never know. Mm -hmm. You know, you might get a lot of rain this week and we're assuming it's not going to grow, but there you go. So you although edge. you're on that, mm -hmm. that, that route, we're still available to give you that weekly service if it needs to be done. How do you guys go about marketing that to your clients? Because that, that's pretty unique as far as like not breaking it down to we're showing up to mow every week on this day. It's more of like a maintenance contract. Is that kind of like how you guys have structured it for them? Yeah, we don't have a contract with our clients, but we explain to them that at least they have a set bill every month. So therefore, come springtime, their bill's not going up. You know, it's a set rate. So unless they choose to move or they cancel or they add any services, at least you know it's one bill, it remains the same. So that's good for them as a clientele to know, all right, I'm only paying, you know, $120 a month and that's it. I don't have to worry about increasing, paying more when it's spring season. Where do you guys kind of fall on that bracket as far as like pricing goes? Are you guys trying to like get that perfect median between not being too expensive or too cheap? Premium clients. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the name speaks for itself. And yeah. we, we've told multiple, multiple our clients that, hey, when you call, you know, just letting you know, we're gonna charge a high price. So are you sure yeah. you don't wanna shop around? And they're like, no, 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 we've already done this and that, and this guy didn't do a good job. So they know that when we come out, we don't give our free estimates. You know, yeah, for us to gas up, estimates. we're charging you. No, I mean, hey, gotta make money. Yeah, it's yeah, thing, right? yeah, yeah especially yeah. with yeah. right now, this year, especially with the um, inflation that's going on, prices for equipment, is increasing we definitely did increase our prices as well and we let them know over the phone um you know this is the range that you'll be in so therefore you know you know ahead of time before i would come out to do the estimate this is the range that you're going to be in mm -hmm. so they already know for flower bed enhancements you know the range is going to be so we yeah. we like to be up front because you know it's time wasting to go out there and do an estimate and then they don't come on board or they could have went with someone else or maybe got another estimate so we like to be up front with our clientele and let them know what to expect. Everyone when they call, right, they're asking for a price over the phone. They want to know how much it's going to be right when they call you. They don't want to hear anything yeah. else. Do you think that range has helped bridge that gap and probably close more deals? Because at least they get something to think about right. while you're trying to right. get out there. Yeah. Yeah, it does help with the uh, landscaping. We already have like a set price for a 
maintenance, All especially right. it depends on your property. If it's a cleanup, of course, it's going to be more, mm -hmm. but we have a set price for actual maintenance. So they would know when they call, okay, this what's your property, we pull up their address, we look and see if it's a corner lot or not. We ask them, do they have a fence? Do they have any pets? And all of those things. So we qualify our clientele as well, just like how they're qualifying us. And then we have a base price, long care maintenance, this is what it's gonna be. And then if they need anything additional, then of course, then we go from there. And we'll call and confirm and make sure that they're happy with the price before yeah. we send an invoice. Cause we would hate to just, we don't want to waste your time knowing that, okay, you paid $40 for the estimate, but you honestly can't afford our prices. So we took your money. Yeah. We don't, Bye. so we let them know, hey, it's going to be this amount. Are you sure you want us to send you this invoice? Yeah, 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 send it. So we'll go ahead and send it. But we, we're not in business to just take money and, and just run. We want to make sure that if you call us out, you can afford it and you're going to be happy. That's why we charge high. Cause you're going to get a bunch of other stuff with that. And we like to make sure that the client is ready to get the job done. Done. I know a lot of times they might shop around and they're not ready until maybe six months later. So we're like, when are you ready to get the job done? Is it within 30 days? Therefore we know, because once we book and schedule, it's getting done within a week. Yeah. So we like to make sure that once we come out and do an estimate, we're look, you're looking at within seven days getting service. Could you guys share a time with us when you either like lost your shirt on a job, like estimate gone wrong, or customer freak out? Yeah, I first saw a job in Georgia. Oh, She yeah. did the estimate. She oh, was yeah, coming yeah, yeah. from, I, she was <laughs> leaving the post. She was going to lunch and the, the gentleman called, she was already in the area. So I said, just go yeah. through the estimate. And then she did the estimate and then the payment went through. I was like, wow, okay. So then, we go, you know, we're buying the supplies and I walk on our property. I'm like, Tiffany, you charged them three grand for this? <laughs> yeah, honey, yeah. <laughs> this is an easy five, six, this is a lot of work. She's like, well, it's our like, first well, side shit. job, honey. Yeah, I'm I was like, like yeah, oh, I should have been in. here. <laughs> we should have been here, but although- It actually came out really it well. It came out good and we got four more clients in that That's same- That's what I, so we I was, was able, looking ahead. Yeah. I was like, look. We are, you might think I underbid, but once this goes on the website, once it's going on social media, they're going to see that we can do this, then we can get more. Now we can charge higher. And now we didn't know nothing about side. We didn't know how much a top sold would cost. Yeah, yeah, the palace, yeah. we just looked at overall, we look, we eyed it. Okay, it's going to be this amount, that yeah. amount. We didn't even call around, but oh, we, we didn't dip too much. We didn't make much, but at the end of the day, it the client was happy. Really nice. Neighbors were happy, so we was able to get more business. Yeah, we got more business after that. Could you guys walk me through what it, what you're thinking of when you are doing an estimate for a saw job? The quality of the turf really, really matters the most. Um, and also what type of saw, what type of grass do they need in their backyard. Some properties they may, in Georgia, we found that they would have Zorger in the front and then Bermuda in the back. They would do a split somehow, I don't know why. Here, St. Augustine, we try to make sure that it's quality sawed. Um, we only get sawed from certain places, like Sawdex and one other spot. Yeah. So, um, it, and measurements, you gotta make sure your measurements are right. Over measurement, you know, if you get an extra half a pallet, oh well. But you don't want to get just enough because you never know. And we charge high for our saw yeah. installation. That's only because we offer insurance. So if we install it and something happens within the first six months, we'll rip it all up and do it again. All right. Unlike a, a regular sod company, they're going to come out. If they ever see them do sod, they're just throwing a sod anywhere. I'm like, yo, that's going to die. And literally, you know, within 90 days, it didn't even germinate. It's brown. It's like complete, like they threw bleach all over it. Yeah, and so, we'll actually, uh, we'll offer like a complimentary mow, yeah. you know, your first mow. Yeah. So therefore, when it is, you know, 60 days in and it's at a good height, we'll come in, we'll mow at the height it's supposed to. Because we found that there's some people that'll get new sod and then they'll come and they'll mow it too low. So they're already killing off the sod. If you're going to pay a higher percentage for sod, yeah. we need to make sure we're yeah. going to do a good job because our reputation is on the line. So yeah. we don't take on every and any sod job. We have to make sure that your turf is going to work because also the client, if you're already not taking care of it and you're just doing whatever, then we're going to be back out ripping it up. So we try to make sure that the client understands how important it is to take care of your lawn, water, irrigate, get the fertilization going, don't walk on it, don't park on it, don't play on it. Yeah. And once we kind of get the idea that they're going to, you know, be respectful to the lawn, then we'll go ahead and submit the invoice. But a side job, you're going to need a new back. Okay, <laughs> especially if you're doing two acres of plus like we did in Georgia. Yeah, it's not yeah, fun. Yeah. yeah. Do 
you guys have a bookkeeping service with lawn yeah. care. Elite yeah, financials. Elite Financials. That's a separate, it's more a sister company of ours. We tie that in with um, other landscapers who need help. So they're going to come to us and they need, you know, they have a landscaping property taxes, or they need everywhere. taxes done, their bookkeeping mentorship. done, mentorship as well. Employees. So, yeah. So they don't have to worry about the hiring process. They have a really big job and, you know, they only need some maybe for a couple of days. They don't have to worry about hiring or going on Indeed. And, Hey, just call us. We can provide you with a worker, one of ours, or even we'll come out and help you out for you know a small fee, and we can build a relationship with you and do your bookkeeping. So therefore, you know your numbers come tax season. And um, yeah, this it's been working great for us so far. And we've discovered we've discovered a lot of things as well in the industry. Like we we're saying that there's landscapers out there who have all the equipment, but yet their systems aren't in place. Their truck is a mess. They can't find anything. You know, you got to keep your equipment clean. You got to keep your truck clean. Therefore, you're organized mentally and also will surround you as well. So, Which goes back to what I yeah. said earlier. Although we may not be mowing, we're still in that area because we're doing one property the previous week, but right. one of the companies we mentor is doing the neighbors. So they're like, hey, can you come out? Let me know what am I doing wrong? Why is it taking me X amount of time to do this lawn? So right. although we do this lawn here, we're going to be here mentoring this, right. you know, this business. Yeah, so we're still yeah. out there. Yeah, we're still out there helping and, you know, trying to make sure everyone is on the same. We're not in it to win for ourselves. We want to make, we wish that all the landscaping companies can just come together. It'll be easier yeah, that it'll be way. Easier. Instead of being cutthroat, you know, this person does it for 100, this person does it for 15, and now you're cutting each other's throats, but really the supplies are still the same. Same, yeah. So the only <laughs> thing you're taking a loss on is labor. So yeah. if we all focused on working together, then the only thing the client will have to compete with is work ethics right. and customer professionalism, service. customer service. If everyone prices was the same, we all can win. Yeah. But when we're so busy trying to cut each other's throats and, you know, you're ducking your head, like my Andy said, ducking your head when you see the other <laughs> landscaper, you're not gonna scale up that way. Yeah, know? we don't really plan not. on being like a million dollar landscaping because like, you know, we have other businesses, we have other interests, so we don't plan on being so big. We'd rather maintain a team that we have, you know, they refer other soldiers and keeping it small and tight and, you know, six figure company is fine for us. You, know? you don't need all the equipment. For the past two years, we've been in the six figures and you see, you know, our equipment. You don't need much. Oh, you yeah. just need strong work ethics, good systems, you know, and just making sure you answer the phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Gotta answer, answer those the phones, phones, man. <laughs> Even if it's scam likely, just pick it up. You never know. So if anybody is looking to work for you guys in the area or are looking for premium lawn care landscaping services, how could they find you guys? We are on Facebook, Instagram. Instagram at Elite Yard Services. And our phone number is 813-573-2294. You can email us at eliteyards at, at outlook.com. Outlook and if yeah. you want any mentorship, uh, bookkeeping, taxes, we, uh, we're on Elite Financials with a Z. Yeah. And that's on Instagram and Facebook too. Sweet. Well, seriously, thank you for the interview. No problem, man. It's great meeting you guys. Thank you. Just want to say a big thank you for you for watching, sharing, liking, subscribing. We make these for you to learn about the industry, to hear about other businesses. So if you want to be featured on a future episode, make sure you go to mikeandys.com slash sign up. Get your applications in because we're always looking for new businesses to highlight, to tell their stories. I'm sure you have something to share and something to raise the level of professionalism in the industry. I hope to see you on a future episode of Zero Turn.